It's time for a guitar pick. Eric and I, hi Eric. Hi. Eric and I are going to talk about a musical that I listened to and Eric watched like stick figure drawings from. That's a little bit more complex stick figure. Is it? I didn't actually look at it at whatever it was you were watching. Uh, I just listened to this. And thought it might be interesting to kind of, you know, contrast our experiences because after just a couple of... We, we, we listened to and, and, and sort of kind of watched Hamilton. Um, and, and that was uh, suggested to us on Patreon by Dylan Mustiello. So thanks a lot um, to you, man, for thinking of this. Some, somewhat of an out-of-the-box thing for us. Uh, and I don't know how much interest there will be in us talking about this, but uh, this will be the first time we've... Uh, you and I have talked uh, soundtrack together at all and the first time... Uh, we I, I've talked to play I don't I think really at all on, mm -hmm. on the channel um, so in, in interesting new territory for us and uh, we will do our level our, our level best but um, after I listened to a couple of tracks I was like no I'm pretty sure I can I can uh, I can get I can get through this pretty well and I get at least a decent sense of it without visuals um, yeah I I had a whole thing and now I don't want to see anything from it at all until I actually get to see it because it'll be cool to see what it's like versus my imagination because. Like I've I've known a number of people that that do like the musical thing. Yeah, and they just listen to them. Yeah, and I just I'm like, but you're not getting the experience of it, and like I just don't understand that. I'm not even saying it's, it's wrong. Obviously, or judging a visual I component. Don't and get it. it. Here's what I don't understand. Um, it's like people saying that like. Like, you should read Shakespeare. I'm like, no, you should see Shakespeare. It's meant to be seen. It's not meant to be read. That's true. Um, the difference is, with, with Shakespeare, if, you have, if you're savvy enough with the language, you can more or less get what's going on. Well, yes. Um, the thing with Hamilton is I think you can get more than the gist just listening to it. I'm saying because that it is having, all song. I'm, I'm saying that having done it myself, obviously mm -hmm. there are things that I'm sure will come alive for me and I'll understand a lot better when I have a visual component. When I And, and if there is anything at all between tracks, because I don't know that, I've not seen it. I don't believe there is. It, it feel, Especially because of how long it is, I can't see how there possibly could be. But there might be some unspoken stuff. But but like I, if there's any dialogue in between, I would. Be I also surprised. saw a couple songs that are not on the Broadway recording. They're from the off off Broadway. So there's a couple like in between songs that that. Uh... I probably heard all of it. Okay. Because I uh, because I listened to um, the soundtrack on Spotify and I bet it's got all that extra stuff okay. on it. But I, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, I didn't look real deep into it. I just went to Spotify. But anyway, uh, but what I was gonna say is, but imagine doing this for other musicals where. There, where a lot of it is spoken. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it wouldn't make any sense at all to listen to Dr. Horrible without, without watching it. Like, yeah, yeah. And, but people do this. Yeah. I, 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 don't, just, I, don't I don't understand it. it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, like, like I get, okay, like the music's catchy and I'm picking up on some of what's going on, but I would always feel like I was missing yeah. stuff. Yeah, I get listening to musical music after you've seen after the production. After you've seen it, yeah. Yeah, and you're like, oh, I like that music. But I don't get that being the, the only... But the idea of just going to the music is strange to me. Uh, what, part of what works about it with Hamilton also is, besides the fact that you know there's some profanity in that play, mm. um, I feel like you can, and I think that works. Mm. Uh, I think I think this works totally as a pure, uh, pure, pure straight up adult play. I have no problem with the profanity, well, especially with the subject matter. Uh, partly because of the subject matter, partly because of some of the uh, some of the musical choice. Uh, this is a guy who just let loose and wrote something, mm. and I think that it, it totally it totally works. Mm. Um, it would feel almost disingenuous if he didn't go to those places. I th I think, mm. um, but. Having said that, uh, there are some tracks that you could listen to in isolation just as educational tracks. That's true. That's true. You know, they, they, like like really catchy melodies that are really fun to listen to that you don't even necessarily need the rest of the story for because it just tells you things about history. Well, and I learned a lot of stuff about history. Yeah, of course. This, especially yeah. about Isaiah Hamilton. And also, and I've learned this, everyone that's a fan of this then also goes and knows everything that's in historically inaccurate about that. Like, I've talked to a couple of different oh, people. I bet. Where they know all the historical inaccuracies. This is making people history fans, at least of Alexander Hamilton. They go and they do their research. And that's great. Well, and by extension, you you end up getting a lot about the revolution and the original... Um, you know, drafting the Constitution and, mm. the, and, the, and, the, and the Congress and everything. Um, so it's one of those things where, like, like you you can't just study that guy because of everybody else that's connected. Well, to but, it. but but is that thing that you always talk about where it's uh, history should be seen through certain perspectives? Exactly. It's, e it's yeah. easier to digest history once from a character's perspective. Well, 
when people talk about the founding fathers, it's it's really easy to accidentally get stuck in this weird feedback loop where it's like, um, well, we know not everyone is perfect, but 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 like 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 we're the Constitution has to has to stand, and 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 we have to build everything from that, and they must have been perfect, right? Mm-hmm. And um, you get this from the perspective of an incredibly flawed guy. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think that's really important, you know. Like, like something you don't hear a lot of people talk about, at least laymen, when they when they bring up the founding fathers, is corruption in the first place. Yep, yep. And that's discussed at length in the play. An immediate, um, like the second America starts of, like, uh, not like head hunting, but like vying for the top and fi- immediately fighting each other because. It's America, like it's almost like it's immediately America, and we're immediately yeah. trying to achieve the American dream at the expense of everyone around us. Yeah, that's really interesting. <clears throat> but you know, there's there's the power corrupting thing, and uh, there, there's and and I mean, like Hamilton in the play is at times an almost dangerous figure because of his drive for the sake of drive. Mm-hmm. And this this all I'm getting just from the music, mm-hmm. um, which is really cool. Like, I haven't even seen this play. Well, well, and 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 I I think it's interesting that like all of his power comes from his words and, and him as a writer. Yeah. Um, that like that's what he's known for. It's like he just wrote a lot. It's one of my favorite songs. Which one? The the uh, the I I forget how exactly it goes, but but uh, the, I've listened to this through one time, and there's a lot of music. But um, but the 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 one about uh, how he's he he's writing like it's going out of style. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's writing like he's like he doesn't have many years left. To, to live and how does he write every second of every day and and then um, he's obsessed with his own with his own legacy and his own history now he's going to be viewed by history yeah uh, which is a thing I did not get initially and thought was real cheesy <clears throat> where like they just kept talking about history and you'll be remembered by history I'm like yeah. I get it. It happened in the past, and I, I was like, "Oh no, he's obsessed." He's with obsessed. That. Yeah, it's part of it's part of his art. It's they're they're not they're not just speaking to a classroom. Mm. <clears throat> no, I'm with you. I thought there was some cheese fest going on at the beginning too, and then I was real winky, and I'm like, "Oh, it's not winky. It's mm-mm. this is what it is." And apparently, a lot of the lyrics are like directly taken from his letters. Oh, that's really cool. They just built a song around things he actually wrote, to my understanding. Yeah, just one of one of uh, one of the coolest things about this, obviously, is just the the anachronism with with uh, the, the, some of the styles of music. And I say styles because we want a gamut here. I think. Mm-hmm. Um, with but but specifically of course uh, rap and, and, and hip hop, um, with <coughs> clearly really really well researched history. Mm-hmm. Like this guy knows both of those worlds equally well, and it's really impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then this is like a story like he just really wanted to tell. He thought this was a really interesting guy to make a make a musical about. Uh, and this is gonna be one of my go to examples now probably, uh, although. It, it's it's so popular it will be an obvious thing to say at this point uh, that it's I, I'm talking a lot about I talk a lot about getting won over by things that you're not already really into mm-hmm. um, I have that with this with a lot of the musical styles where mm-hmm. like I don't usually go to uh, this this brand of rap and hip hop but I feel like a fan of it while I'm listening to it. Mm-hmm. And it's incredibly well blended. I mean, it's just crazy the the, the variety uh, and, and the in the in the the broad sweeping, um, I uh, going across so many different styles uh, that that he's able to blend together. Mm-hmm. Well, and especially like he gets Broadway when like, there's when there's like reprises in the middle of songs to like previous songs that are different musical style, but yeah. it feels natural within the piece. Yeah, you'd think that that would feel mm-hmm. all over the place, but it doesn't. Yeah. This has got to be Joss Whedon's favorite thing ever, right? I would think so. Yeah, like I've never heard him talk about it, but like there, there's there's so many things that are that that have to be inspired by things that he was inspired by. Where I were like like I, I catch I kept catching myself where I'm like that reminds me of Doctor Horrible. No, Doctor Horrible is 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 like this other thing that mm-hmm. this is also like. Yeah. Um. I'm I, I'm almost desperate to see it now. Yeah, I also want to see it. Um, it'll be a while before it's affordable to go see. <laughs> yeah, probably so. But and before it comes anywhere, you know, you're closer. We're there is able supposed to, see to be it, a film. Yeah, um, that'll, be, that'll be huge if yeah. it's done right. Um, okay, so I do have a thing that I don't get. Yeah, sure. Uh, like like a like a criticism kind of a thing. Yeah, 
So at the end, spoilers, at the end, when Alexander Hamilton dies, spoilers for, for history, um, when Alexander Hamilton dies, um, <laughs> and his wife has this song, which is a beautiful song, um, where she's where she's like, uh, uh, like, like, I'm going to tell your story. And I just have this thing, I'm like, but why? Like, what story? Because I think Act 1 is a real distinct story, Act two, and also I think, don't know why you'd want to tell that story. Like your husband made a, like a lot of mistakes, and like I don't know what she thinks. Well, and also what is the legacy? The biggest thing she's angry with him about is airing their dirty laundry in public, mm -hmm. and now that's what she's gonna do. Yeah, I don't get the whole. Like I get going back historically, like this guy's well, maybe fascinating. She's had her, wanna... Maybe her, she's had her her mind changed in some way, where she thinks that like like she's willing to make that sacrifice because it's important for people to know, so like they don't repeat history or right. or, or whatever. I don't I don't know, but but it's no, that's a, that's it a doesn't question. feel like a cautionary tale. It doesn't feel like she's talking about like a, it's like it's you lived such a great life, and I'm like, but did he? Why would or you maybe like despite everything? Yeah, but I don't feel like it is just when you get to the end of his life. I don't feel like it was despite everything. Yeah. I feel like he really messed up and he kind of died a loser. Um, and so it's just, like, I get looking backwards and be like, this is a really fascinating person. I don't get in the moment being like, I'm going to make sure your story's told. That you are really important and then ruined your entire life and then died. <laughs> like, That's I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't fully get it. But it, it's, it's a wonderful song. Like, yeah. I just, I don't fully understand the motivation. And I'm sure that's historically accurate. Like, I guess. I assume I don't there know. There are songs that are, of course, more memorable than others, but there was nothing where I was just like, "Ooh, I want to skip this." Like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. I didn't, I didn't have that really with anything. Um, there were, there were songs that I guess, you know, sort of like exposition in an action movie that were kind of more explaining than they, than they, than they felt like, you know, like, like artistic pieces in and of themselves. But uh, there were songs I thought went a little long. Where like, I, I wasn't like, I want to skip this song, but I would get like. Halfway or two thirds of the way through, I'm like, I kind of want to know what the next song sounds like. Sure, yeah. Um, or we're we're not we're not really telling a lot of story anymore, and we're kind of just repeating choruses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's not a lot of that. Um, there's there's not a there's not a whole there's not especially for a musical. There's not nearly as much repetition of lyrics as you would expect because, um, and that's one of the things that 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 rap affords you is a you can get a lot more of the you can, you can get a lot of the dialogue in the music because you have so much room and you can speak really fast mm -hmm. and you can you can just you can get a lot in right. Mm -hmm. um, but also uh, even outside of of of, um, of rap lyrics, there's a lot of places where uh, we'll repeat choruses, but we've got different lyrics and we're continuing to move the narrative forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and and of course it does uh, what a lot of great musicals do because a lot of things that I want to praise this for are things that I've also seen done well in other things where we're not reinventing the wheel or anything but the place where I feel like you know we're obviously really really uh, moving the needle and pushing envelopes is is again um, the mixture of styles and mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and and how it almost creates something that feels brand new um, it, but but you but I think a lot of great musicals do this and and, and this does it expertly where you have. Uh, you bring back uh, melodies and lyrical ideas, and you use them in different contexts, and they call back, but they're not just reprises. They they, they sound like reprises, but sometimes uh, you'll have a um, you'll have what started as like like a like a, a light and happier idea that that comes back on, on a sour note, mm -hmm. and those kind of things. Yeah, uh, we did we do that with uh, Room Where It Happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we do that with the song um, uh, about uh, where, where, where it's like, uh, uh, it must be nice to have George Washington on your side. Yeah, and yeah. when we bring that back, it's in an entirely different context. Yeah, um, I like that song a lot too. Rumor it happens is my favorite. It's really catchy. I cannot get it out of my head now. Uh, Rumor it happens and the King of England songs have been yeah. stuck in my head. Of course, yeah. Um, my my favorite is Satisfied uh, with a close second sure. for, for, for Burn. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like Burn's the big breakout one that like I feel like people talk about a lot. It's good, but I really like Satisfied. Um, I don't know what it is about that song. I'm not a music person. Like I sure. am never good at articulating like why I like a song. And so often I'm like, this song moves me and I don't, I don't know why. This is one of... I, I have it with a lot of songs. I'm like, I can't explain to you what I like about the song. I just do. Well, I think the lyrical crux of the of, of the whole thing is the My Shot song, and that comes back over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. I did learn... 
If I and learned the, anything of course, at all, now that I'm thinking, is double entendre, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Of course, uh, I did learn if I if I, if I've learned anything duel. at all, the duel's great. Um, if I were to enter in a duel, <laughs> I will not raise my pistol because the two instances that we get, the person turning to shoot does not have enough time to realize that you have raised your gun to the sky to show that you're not going to duel. And they are, they have already shot you. I'm as thinking, they have that realization. Maybe the white flag is a better idea. Yeah, or, yeah. yeah. Uh, what did you think of the epic rap battle? Just right smack dab in the middle of the. <laughs> it's really good. Play. It's really good. It's really good. Um, I uh, the one thing I didn't fully get uh, from context, like I had to kind of look into, is exactly what's in the letter that he writes. That that you know, kind of. Uh, like, this is a man who will cut off his nose to, nose to spy his face. Yes. I didn't fully get what was in the letter, and I had to go look at something else to figure out, like, okay, so he basically just came out and said, I couldn't have done this because I was sleeping with this woman, and this guy, and I'm paying this guy to be able to sleep with his wife, and so there's that's why I can't possibly be doing these things you're accusing me of. I didn't fully get what was in it. Yeah, I had that too. Um, I, I I had to go actually like look it up. Um, but uh, and and the the wife's explanation is not enough. Yes, yes, I agree. Um, I do like one of my favorite things, and it's in Burn, is when she talks about the letter that the the, the letter that he actually wrote. Uh, and the hubris of this man that he doesn't just like he doesn't just write a letter that exonerates him. He publishes it so everyone can yeah. see it. Yeah. So everyone knows he's not guilty. He's just a scumbag. Um, Which is, of course, again, what the wife is mostly upset about. Yeah, I love. Uh, she has the, the, there's this moment in her, in her song "Burn" where she where she talks about just like how scattered and frantic his writing is, uh, as opposed to everything else he's already written. Because like it's just it's all just. Uh, like raw emotion and he's not thinking yeah he's just reacting and I just I don't remember exactly what the turn of phrase is but it's really well worded uh, I think it, and you know obviously a lot of things will be, it pop out of me and I'll, I'll remember more when I listen to it again which I definitely will um, I, I had a real experience with this uh, and I know a lot of people do and it's obvious and it's cliche but yes it's 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 worth all the hype it's, it's popular as, for a reason I have stayed away from it because it was just so popular sometimes I do that on accident where I'm just like I don't know if I care I'm so sick of hearing people talk about this mm -hmm. and like you know and this will be a segue here in a minute but like Weird Al puts out his polka for this and do you know about that? I do I, I've listened um, to it yeah, I, listened, I listened to it before, um, I, before I listened to, to oh see I couldn't bring myself life. to do it I was like I need to know it first um, well I didn't and, know I was going to oh yeah of yeah. course um, but I mean I was avoiding it until I finally the ended up it's great it's it's what you expect. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's it's a polka. It's Weird Al doing another one of his polkas, but but, but I mean, like he he does all the standard beats. He usually does, yeah, you, you know, one yeah. of those. Um, yeah, it's it's great, but it's it's a Weird Al polka, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, it's I have a playlist of Weird Al polkas, and it'll fit in nicely with that. I put it on random. <laughs> uh, my kids love that. We'll go on car trips. We'll put on the Weird Al polka playlist. Just eleven polkas in a row. It's awesome. <laughs> Um, you'd think that would run together, but I've listened to them separately so many times, I do not have that problem. Polka will never die. That's right. And Weird Al has really helped to keep it alive. Uh, but no, um, I was gonna, I was gonna say something. Um, yeah, I, I don't know, it's just like, I, I, I know people that listen to that all the time, and a lot of it, like, like we said earlier, is just context, where it's like, but I haven't seen the play, why would I listen to the music? Yep, yep. And, uh... I implore people to do it because I didn't know all the story was in the music. And that, and, that, and everyone that ever you almost listened to it like a sung radio play. I, I will go that far. And anyone who ever told me like, but you don't need to see it. Like you can just listen to it. Are all people that do that with all musicals? Uh huh. And I'm like, I don't know how like, much I can trust it's that. It's not like that with everything. Well, and when I looked at the track list, I was like, holy crap, this is like two and a half hours long. <laughs> it must all be in the music, and it is. Yep. And, and I think... But God, it's catchy, man. And like, I think, like, all the spoken dialogue is on the tracks. Uh, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. at least what I listen to, there is a couple of spoken dialogue bits. But it's all... There's there's still music behind it. It's all mm. it's, it's it's all still part of... The, I mean, it's seamless. Yeah, yeah. The way it goes through. No, it's, but, it's, uh, it's really good. Yeah. Got it. Got it's great. It's just as good as everybody. I mean, <laughs> like, like Lo was trying to get me to listen to it a couple years ago when I was in California, and I was like, I haven't seen this. Like... I haven't seen this play. Like, yeah, that's that's a really good sounding rap, I guess. But I don't know what I'm listening to. Then I listen to it on my own. I got a quarter of the way through, and I sent Lo a message, and I was like, "Okay, so I'm listening to Hamilton now." And she's like, 
yeah, what do you think? And I was like, well, it's brilliant. She's like, yeah, right? I told you. She and I have been messaging back and forth about that, but, um... Anyway, well, I wish I got um, a Ben Franklin song. That's the one big thing. I'm I know, I had that too. And when he shows <laughs> up, I'm really excited, and then I don't get a song. Yeah. yeah. Ben Franklin kicks ass. Yeah, I love, I love Ben Franklin. Um, I've always been a big fan of his autobiography. Um, I've never read that. Oh, you should. Oh, it's wonderful. yes, I should. Um, because there's there's a there's a lot of great life advice in that, and then there's really uh, extreme stuff where you're like, I don't know if I should just take naps. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and stuff like that. <laughs> if you're seems, tired, don't care about anyone around you. Just take a nap. Seems a little extreme to me. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Is it lewd? Because no. he, um, he was a ladies' man. I don't think so. Okay. okay. Or maybe just not by modern standards. Um, <laughs> well, anyway. Uh, so I want to talk a little bit about the uh, current Weird Al... Um, uh, tour going on. It's not like I, ju I just went in Kansas City last week, and um, I've had tickets for six months. Uh, we're really excited about it, and uh, because I I've seen him three times now, and uh, it's not like his normal shows. So usually he puts on a big multimedia show, and he does costumes, and in between costume changes, um, he's got uh, he's got old videos from from going you know years and years back, and um, it's always a great. He always puts on an amazing show, and I and I got to see. The um, almost said I like fun. That's the latest Team BG album, the uh, mandatory fun tour, uh, where he does tacky in in the parking lot coming into the show, and it's it's just the best. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, because they, they they show it on the on on, on the screen, uh, and and he's walking through the parking lot, and then you saw him, you see him walk all the way through the building, and uh, then he gets on stage right at the end in the oh, last that's verse. That's yeah, really cool. He did it at every show. Um, uh, for for during that tour. Um, this is uh, I get mugged. This is that's that's hilarious. I'm sure they had security. This was uh, this show is stripped down, streamlined. Uh, is kind of your basic regular rock show. Um, with I mean I mean like like it, it's spectacularly produced. Um, some of the best lights I've seen in a while. Interesting. Uh, like it's it's really well handled. Um, when when he does and I'll mention a few a, a few tracks he played. When when he does um, horoscope. Um, you know that song? Yeah. Uh, that, that's your horoscope for today. Um, I forget what my horoscope is, but it's you hilarious. You remember that? You remember that line? Mine's mine's Leo, and he just it just gets stuck in there somewhere, and that's unfortunate. But there is um, but there's this uh, but there, there's a part in that song if you'll remember, um, where uh, where he says uh, all, all your all your friends are out to to get you or something, kill them. And when he says kill them, uh, all the lights drop and it's just red on his face. Or kill them, and then and then the red goes away. <laughs> it's fantastic. Uh, but anyway. So, um, it's one of the classiest shows I've ever seen, and it's definitely one of the best shows I've ever seen. Um, he seemed, I, I read interviews with him when he, when he started this, and just before he was, he was doing it, and he uh, was really worried uh, that it would come off um, too self-indulgent, and that people wouldn't be interested in it, because... Uh, people are so used to his his big well, you stage really shows. What, what this kind and of, what the show is? It's well, I'll get there. Okay. Um. But 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 first of all, a lot of it was just um. He didn't know if people would accept that he wasn't doing the costumes and stuff. I mean mm -hmm. that 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 was the beginning. He's talking about this show like it's really novel to not have costumes and multimedia. It's just a regular rock show. I've wanted that from him forever, and we finally got it. But the other reason, uh, as Eric is alluding to, which I was getting to, um, that he was worried that it, that it would come off too self-indulgent is because he's not playing the hits. Now, some of them are because some of his um, some of his originals are some of his most well-known stuff, um, like Dare to Be Stupid, uh, which he opens with, mm -hmm. and he opens with a brilliant blues rendition of, of Dare to Be Stupid. A lot of them he plays straight, but that and a couple other things, um, he he uh, he changes the. Um, the, the genre on you, and uh, and 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 does some really nice stuff with harmonies, uh, and his band is better is 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 more brilliant than anybody's ever given them credit for. Um, because imagine what what they have to do. Like you've got to be able to play every kind of style there is. Um, you've got to be able to sound like fifty other bands, and not, and be in the ballpark of how well they perform. Yeah, exactly, and not just. Um, and not just with the parodies, like, 
almost all of his original music is also pastiches of other bands. So even if you're not straight up doing um, a, a, a cover of a Cake song, if you're doing a Cake pastiche, you got to sound like Cake. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you got you got to sound like. Um, uh, uh, who was it? You know, it's Fashion Pumpkins or whatever it is. You mm -hmm. know. Um, so anyway, uh, th this show was about playing originals, and when I first heard about it, um, I heard about it wrong. Somebody told me. me, was it you? It was I me. thought it was somebody else. I heard about it wrong. Um, and told you. Yeah. So Eric, I guess, is who it was. Uh, thought that it was all new accordion music. That it was just polka music, and um, I would have been okay with that. But uh, it's a. It's kind. It's kind of a like time machine trip back through just the history of of Weird Al and his the stuff that he created from scratch, and um, it's it's just wonderful. Uh, he plays a couple of songs that are not my favorite things, um, but uh, and, and of course that's going to happen because he's got some things that I think are kind of duds and and like like he does. Um, it's getting late. I'm trying to remember things. Um, he 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 does a Jackson Park Express from the end of Mandatory Fun. That's the only thing from that album he plays, and uh, it's. I don't even remember that one. It's 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 the last track. It's a deep cut. It's nine minutes, and I uh, I don't I never cared for it. Um, it's it's uh, it's all about like. Uh, him and a girl meeting for the first time, and he exaggerates uh, all of these things that they're like thinking to each other just through facial expressions. Oh and yeah, you remember that? Yeah, he plays that, and uh, I was really disappointed because I was like, like, and of course, every everything he plays, he plays brilliantly. But I was like, I'm not the biggest fan of this song, and if he's playing Jackson Park Express, that means we're not going to get Albuquerque. Yeah, we should say it's not one set list. Each show is. It's like what'd you say? It was like fifty songs at least. Yeah, they 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 learned like sixty songs, and um, it's 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 different with with uh, with every show. And there's certain songs that come up more often than others. That's true of a lot of bands with a repertoire that big, certainly. Oh, okay. but it is. I mean, Team is that way too. But it's it, but you're right. It is worth noting because when he uh, normally goes on tour, the shows are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. there's, it, he doesn't understand why he has anybody that follows him around because all the shows are, are just the same. But he said this tour finally it would be worth having groupies because um, they they would get a different show every time. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I'm used to that because of kind of Team BG shows, and it's a lot like a Team BG show mm -hmm. in, in, in a lot of ways, um, except that he doesn't ramble on between tracks. I mean, the Giants are hilarious when they do that, but um, he has very prepared jokes and things that he's doing in, in between things. Mm. He pitched it like, I'm, and he does, he sits down the whole show until the end, but but he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to sit on a stool and um, I'm going to talk a lot in between um, songs and it's going to be like this intimate experience with me and my fans. He's he does not seem the most comfortable off the cuff. He, he makes up everything in between and he says some really funny stuff, but... Um, he plays Melanie, which I which I called. I figured we would get that. Um, I get the sense that's one of his favorite original songs. And uh, he he says he says uh, next I'm gonna play uh, one of my songs about a creepy guy who stalks a girl. So that narrows it down to like thirty or forty, uh, which is true. It's a lot of those. Mm -hmm. um, but I, but yeah. So when he did Jackson Park Express, I was like, I was like, oh man, this means we're not gonna get Albuquerque. Not only did we get Albuquerque, and I'll tell you about that because it was brilliant. You know that song. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, of course. Not not only not only does he play Albuquerque, but he plays three more songs after it. And uh, he used to only close shows with that song because it would throw his voice out so much. You can only imagine, right? Mm. He not only plays more songs after it, Albuquerque is longer than normal. He does other stuff to it. He makes it take longer. He does other vocal intensive stuff. And then the most vocal intensive things he does besides that song come after that song. I couldn't believe it. And he sounds great the, the, the whole way through. Um, he does some some really technical stuff uh, relatively with, with his voice right after that. Because that's where he, he does uh, do the cover medley. And... Um, I've heard him do some of this before, but I think he added some songs to it. So he does a medley where he does like six or seven covers that are again all in in different um, in different kinds of styles. So he'll he'll change things up and he'll he'll make something doo wop or he'll make it funk or he'll make you know whatever it is. And um, he does like this power ballad version of like a virgin that he always ends it with. And uh, I think I've seen him do that live once. 
but it was it was cooler this time. And uh, again, that's got the most vocal intensive stuff on it. And then he uh, he comes back out for um, his um, uh, you, you know you leave the you leave the stage and then and then you come back okay. uh, his encore and he thanks and um, he plays he 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 said he would he would probably end these shows with uh, with one cover and he comes back and he plays Saga Begins um, which is fine but I've heard him do that every time I've been I've been to a concert of his so yeah, the one concert I went to he played that so I couldn't get super excited about it but. It's you know it, that that song is also kind of near and dear to my heart because I don't know if you know this but that is I think the first song I ever did by myself on stage. Oh. Um, I did a uh, I did like a I think like a tenth grade talent show, and um and and did that song and it was my stepdad played piano and we got, and we, we got a drummer and we got a drummer with a Darth Vader mask and uh, like nobody even knew who who he was it was hilarious um but uh so that's kind of near and dear to my heart but uh, anyway so um. Albuquerque is amazing in concert. Again, I don't know if if, uh, if a lot of this is stuff that he's added just for this show, or if he used to do it at other ones. Because that's that's one thing I never got to hear him do. So that was a big deal to me, and especially in this setting, it was really cool. Um, when he when he does the so if 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 you've if you've heard him do this before, you you, you know some of this already probably because I don't know how much of this is new. Um, when he gets the donut segment, he just keeps making up donuts. And he does like fifteen more donuts before he finally gets to bear claws. He just keeps going, and he's and, and he's like, "You got any strawberry donuts? You got any?" And then he gets and 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 he, and he makes up more donuts, and then he gets into berries, and he's like, "Do you have any huckleberry donuts?" And then he just keeps saying different bear, different donuts, and finally he says, "You got any Halle Berry donuts?" And it, it's hilarious. But the thing that busted me up, and I lost it, and I could I could not deal with it. <coughs> Is uh, he gets to the part toward the end of the song where he pretends like he loses his train of thought? You remember that part? Yeah. yeah. And he's like, he's like, well, I don't remember. Uh, I lost my train of thought. I hate sauerkraut. And then before he gets to I, I hate sauerkraut, he goes, well, I guess I better just start all over. They start the song over. Okay. He goes all the way back to the beginning and he plays a verse and a half before he catches back up. He goes, oh wait, no, I, I remember now. And then he and then, and then he stops everything. I hate sauerkraut. It's the best. That's amazing. That was killer. Yeah, uh, it, 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 absolutely, hands down, one of the best shows I've ever seen. And he will play songs, like I said, that I don't care for, that are awesome live. Like, mm -hmm. um, I've never been a Doors fan, and uh, I was a little bit worried that he would probably play Craigslist, and I'm just not a big fan of that song. They freaking rocked that out in concert, man. Like, I don't even care. It's great. Uh, and uh, he, he played the title track from UHF. Oh really? Yeah, that's awesome. It's just really cool the the the, the stuff from from his history that that they go back and, that's and, and super do. Cool. But did they do it in any kind of like chronological? I order? wish I could go again. It's well, wonderful. I guess no. not because Albuquerque being that near to the to the. No, end. you're right. They don't. Um, he starts with newer stuff, but uh, he he get he gets in a lot of older things in the middle of of newer stuff. Um, but uh. But I got one more minute, which is one of my favorites. Did he do germs? Um, he did not do germs. That's one of my favorites. That that would have been a fun one. Um, I have seen him do that live before. Uh, that's better on a bigger stage, I think. But sure. But yeah. But anyway, um, no, it was it was wonderful, and uh, he's always just the most delightful person. Well, yeah. So he seems real cool. So yeah, that was that was amazing. But uh, that is it for guitar pick. Probably the longest guitar pick we've ever done. So that's cool. And uh, I want to thank uh, Dylan Muschiello again for uh, suggesting are listening to Hamilton. Finally, we finally did that. And uh, now, Eric, uh, I think it's time for us to go ahead and uh, jump over to news. Let's do some news, shall we? Uh, we're going to do the captain's log, but Eric is going to help. And we're going to do as many uh, topics, Eric, because we have quite a few from the last three weeks. We're going to do just as many topics as humanly possible. I'm going to have to reset my phone because it just freaked out on me. Um, we're going to do as many topics as possible in uh, just half an hour. So uh, if you want to watch us talk about recent news things, we're going to do some trailers and some other stuff. Stick with us in the next segment. And uh, thanks so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you in just a minute.